right. We have our first speaker up. This is Alex, and he's going to take it away. Oh, wait, Hello. wait, wait. Give me two seconds. I want to get the timer ready. <laughs> Can I talk <Hi>. anyway? <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> One, two, three. Hang on, sorry. Okay, here we go. <laughs> go. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Alex. I'm going to be presenting a Python debugger that I've created called Birdseye. So the difference between Birdseye and a normal debugger is that a normal debugger, you go through line by line. In Birdseye, you work with expressions. Every single expression, you can see the value of it instantly. So for example, here, n is equal to 1. Sorry, not 1, to 5, which is more than 1. N minus 1 is 4. The factorial of that is 24 times 5 is 120. So that's the main thing. Um, obviously, it's great for debugging, but it's also really nice when you have a complicated function that's unfamiliar to you. You can learn what the code does very quickly with much less mental sim uh, simulation. So here we have all the calls to factorial nicely organized. This is how you get to where you want to be. Uh, here's, for example, the same function, but called with n equals 1. You can see this code has been grayed out because it doesn't run. Um, so you can also see statement coverage very quickly. Uh, this is all the functions in the file that I'm debugging. So there's a different function with just one call. This is like my entry point. Um, it calls to factorial at the beginning. And you can actually step into that function call just by clicking on this arrow. And this is where we were just now. So coming back here, I suppose you wanted to debug a loop. You can do that essentially by stepping over iterations of the loop. So here we're changing i. So if I look at i in 2 times i and go through the iterations of the loop, you can watch it changing. Um, you'll see that it only collects a sample of the iterations of the loop. So the data doesn't completely blow up as you're collecting it. Um, as a different example, here's a list. And if I go through. Oh, first, if I expand this, and if I go through the different iterations of the loops, uh, <laughs> if I expand this and go through the different iterations of the loop, you can see it getting bigger. Okay, um, you can expand all sorts of objects, expressions, um, sorry, dictionaries, lists, objects and their attributes, you can expand them all. Uh, again, there's a limitation on how much is collected just to not go crazy. Exceptions are handled really nicely. If you have a long, complicated line with lots of expressions, you can find out exactly which piece of that line raises the exception. And it happens even if the exception is caught even if sometimes it's an exception and sometimes it's an actual value. And so that's pretty much the UI of what it looks like to, to debug with, with bird's eye. Um, if you're wondering how to use this, it's extremely simple. You literally just apply a decorator to the function you want to debug, and that's all it takes in the Python code. And then once you run your Python code, you can run it completely normally, however you want. It'll put the data in a SQL database. By default, it's a SQLite database on your local disk, so there's no setup required. And you just run this one command in the terminal bird's eye that starts the server. And it's from that server that you can see the, the interface that we were just looking at. Uh, to install it, just use pip. Currently supports the latest versions of Python 2 and 3. Uh, no pipe, I'm afraid. And source code is on GitHub. Documentation, uh, pull requests, and issues are most welcome. I'm hoping to do a sprint this weekend where people can come and we can develop features and so on. There's lots of work to d be done. It's a very new project, very small. I'm the only person that's worked on it, so it's a, it's a very greenfield project. It's very unique. I've, I've had a lot of fun working on it. It's also very challenging, and I'd love to uh, start collaborating with some other people. OK, that's it. Uh, yeah, so that was that was four minutes. If you guys don't go and we start clapping, I'm going to start making the talks four minutes so we can clap over you. <laughs>
Uh, we just need to set up Adrian's computer. So uh, I am supposed to entertain you. So I have some fun facts to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Um, these are stupid questions. So when was the supposed, there are no prizes for anyone. So this is just fun, okay? Just so you know. Um, okay, this is about IoT. Does everyone know what IoT means? I'm assuming you do because you're all coders. Okay, a lot of events I go to, people don't have a clue. Um, so what was considered the first, the first IoT object and when was it invented? This is really cool. Oh, bye. No. No. <laughs> the ATM in 1974 by IBM. I, I did not know this. Are you ready? <laughs> the, the fact was supposed to be cooler than that. Um, I'm trying to find you some other cool facts. Okay, so this article that I'm reading was written in 2000 and, uh, 2015. Sorry. How many connected devices were there by the end of that year? No. <laughs> no, but it was closer than 14. Come on. Yeah, about five. Five billion. Well done. If there were prizes, it would be a lot more exciting. Um, <laughs> someone else? Does any Casey, I know you have random facts. Do you want to share a random fact? Yeah, but a short random fact. <laughs> Do you know what the first device was that used punched cards for data storage? Before that. Weaving loom, that's right, the Jacquard weaving loom. <laughs> My questions are way too easy for you guys. <laughs> Does anyone else have some random facts to share with us? Yes. I have a random fact. Yes. <laughs> so yesterday was setup day here, and as you might imagine, I'm not going to point out the floors. I'm going to point out the lights. The lights in this room are all, all skew. Every single one of them is not properly lined up. And while we were standing here trying to figure out where things should be, we were like, hang on a minute. <laughs> and now we can't ever ignore it again. A anyone else? <laughs> okay, how about this? Does anyone have any embarrassing stories or funny stories from PyCon last year? There must be some. Uh, let's hear this. <laughs> no, no, no. no, go on. Wait, where's Neil? Who, who else had some of that bottle? Okay, so when we were at the PyCon at Vitz PDH, there's a bar nearby called uh, Hell's Kitchen. And they have their own little local drink called Hellfire. Uh, just hold that for a moment, please. And um, someone got a shot of this. And so we're like, okay, cool, it's kind of nice. It's, it's got cinnamon in it, which is a bit weird. And then at some point, the barman comes by and he's like, look, um, someone ordered this bottle, they paid for it, but they, they left and they didn't drink it, so here you go. And there were only five of us that finished that bottle that evening. That is one of the worst hangovers I've had in the last five years. Never, ever do that. At all. Or do, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Um, are you guys? Um, I know one of the speakers actually doesn't have PowerPoints. Should oh, nearly there. Um. Should be there. Only one screen. Yeah, only one screen. 
So you go to the definition, and instead of instead of the big <laughs> there we go. Yay! It is always the best going to like tech conferences and the computer never connects. Is so next up, yes. we have Adrian. Take it away, Adrian. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, I do blame the internet. Um, <laughs> It wasn't me, I promise. Um, this is me. I'm going to be talking about Lint Review. It's a linting tool which I quite enjoy working on. Um, so first of all, why style your code? Um, consist consistency is great. Um, they, I, I find it a lot easier to read code when it's consistent. makes it easy to read. Um, you can also follow the official and community standards, such as PEP8, Rubicop, or whatever. Um, and I think a, a linted code base is more familiar if you're looking at a foreign code base. It's something less to worry about when you you approach it. Um, some people don't care about style, and there's good reasons to use something like Flake 8 in Python, because it can actually catch breaking errors. Um, hopefully you've got unit tests that, that catch that stuff, but if you don't, it, it's, it's a good start. Um, so why lint review this particular tool? It runs against your GitHub pull request, um, and it only cares about your code that changed. Um, if you have a, an old project which hasn't been styled, you you can run this against it, so any new changes you make will be styled, which is pretty cool. Um, it's also super easy to work on. It's written in Python and Flask. Um, and this is a Python conference, so it's relevant. Um, not a live demo, as we saw earlier. That probably is a good idea that I'd remove that. So in this silly example, OS wasn't used. So um, the, the Flask app received the webhook from GitHub, ran some flake, some, um, flake 8 over the code, found this error, figured out which line it was, and published for you. So after you fix it, it collapses. So it's gone. Um, so it's, if you would like to look at it, it is Hacktoberfest. If you don't know what that is, um, Google it. You can get a free t-shirt if you make some pull requests. Um, I would like to see Python 3 support, MyPy support, and GitLab support. I'm not the maintainer. I've just occasionally helped out with the project. Um, if you want to know more about it, if you want to know how to run it in your business, or if you want to work on it, come chat to me. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you, you were like two minutes. Well done. <laughs> yeah, you used, used your time up doing that. Cool. Next up, you don't... Oh, wow. Sheesh, if you don't use a PowerPoint, you get a uh, Madonna mic. Does it work? It, it works? It wow, works. awesome. Nice. So next up, we have Lasse. Lasse? Yeah. We, ha we have Lasse. Hello. Please please take five minutes. So that's yeah. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> How are you? Good? Nice. This is my first time to Africa. Uh, <laughs> So what's, what's, what's going to be the first thing I do publicly in Africa? I'm, I'm going to talk about post-its. Because um, post-its are really important. You can do workshops. Um, you can organize information. But we are not being that productive, are we? Um, so we are going to talk about how we can tear off post-its. And there's, there's one particular way of tearing off post-its that we see oftentimes. And it's despicable. So Usually, people take it and they tear it like that. Did, did you see that? So stick it here, and you will, you will see it stands off. And if, if the surface is flat, it will fall off. <laughs> and everybody will be disturbed by you disturbing the workshop, the beautiful workshop. But I can tell you there are better ways to do this. So please listen to me. Join, join the church of the post-it. So you can tear it off from the side. And you will see it will not stand up that much. Isn't this way better? Isn't this amazing? So there's even more ways to tear off post-its properly. Who knows one? Anyone knows one? Yes. Like this, right? 
like pull it really hard. So this is like a really pro method. <laughs> okay, it's like uh, uh, you know uh, cook a, a chef in an in an, in an uh, open kitchen and he's cutting uh, very very visibly. So you you can do it like that um, if you if you really want to seem like a professional. But there's yet another way. From from the top. I, I don't know if there's another way from the top, but <laughs> you, you can you can take the back. So you can tear it off from the back and it will it will roll the other direction and you can pin it. It goes straight there. And this is how you can tear off post its. <laughs> So one little thing, one little thing left. Why, why, why am I doing this? Firstly, I, I hope you enjoy it, um, because between all those technical lightning talks, uh, I'm happy to spread a little bit of fun in between. And secondly, uh, I want to talk to you. This is my first time to Africa. I want to get to know you. Um, if you want to get to know me, please speak to me today. Maybe we can do something in the evening. I'm free. Uh, <laughs> thanks a lot. Hello. I'm really sorry for everyone else that is doing a talk at this conference because he's definitely just beat you. <laughs> that was the best talk I've ever been to. <laughs> cool. Um, are, are you ready? Wow, that was nearly quick. So what I'm going to do is make your time three minutes <laughs> so that we can actually do this clap thing because <laughs> I'm really disappointed. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah, we've got JP. Who have you ever heard of Magic Wormhole? One, okay, so a couple, fantastic. Um, need to go the other, other way. This is a basic introduction and the live demo later on. Me, Computer Whisperer, known as Frostbite on GitHub, Twitter, and a bunch of other things. And you can find the talk in my mono repo there. Everything's a little bit better with the story. So, many, many years ago, Cliff lamented that he, all he wanted to do was send a file to a friend. And this is still pretty hard. You can email it, you can FTP it, you can Dropbox it, you can Google Drive it, you can put it on a USB flash drive and fly it somewhere, you can put it on a DVD. I mean, we, it gets ridiculous. Like, and um, credit for this quote itself comes from JML's post where he wrote about SPEG2. What is SPEG2? I, I, it could say SPEG2, but it's a password authenticated key agreement protocol. What is authentication? Easily it's the password. Like the, the entity that you want to speak to, you authenticate with the password. And Magic Wormel, you can find it there, or you can just install it, because, you know, Python. So if we go to that there, um, who of you know the names Alice, Bob, and then with an even Mallory? Good, we have some cryptographers and security people in the house. Okay, so Alice, Bob, and we have an Eve Mallory over there. We can first send a file and then we can say make the font bigger all right okay <laughs> go away so we can send text and then Bam, it just got there. Now we can also send files.
eight yesteryear drumbeat. Now, something fantastic will happen. He won't get the file. Why? Because Mallory just stole it. <laughs> so, if you want to improve on that, you go, you add verification. I'm sorry, my assistants are very slow. <laughs> yes? Ten seconds more. In did, all honesty, did you that was three again? minutes, so go ahead. I just wanted to do the clap thing. I'm waiting for him. Did, did you steal the session again? Okay. Did, oh, you didn't go dash B. Okay. All right, so then we'll just change to the other side. We'll go no. Uh, no, don't verify. Tell me what your code is, please. And that's Magic Womo. Now, the slides were not done yet, so I just need to quickly get back to the browser. Your time is okay. actually uploaded. <laughs> so, that's what it looks like on the inside. Cool. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Next up. Oh, do you also have to set your Mac up? There's another Mac. So I do. I have another question. Um, what is the best cryptocurrency? <laughs> this is why I've said it. It's an oh god. Here we go. No, no, I don't think it's Ethereum. But anyway, what? Dodge? Really? <laughs> Doge. Sorry. Do you say Doge? I'm sorry. I mispronounced it. I just kind of wanted to start like a, a horrible debate in the room, but you're clearly not going for it. You what? What? Pineapple on pizza. <laughs> what? Um, huh? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh. I just uh, I just want him to start talking. Do you want? It? What? Where's your favorite HTTP error code? 418? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's 418. So what is it? 418. Oh, yeah, the, um, I'm a T-Box. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, that is the, the most important uh, thing that first thing when you do a web app, always implement a slash brew slash coffee endpoint, and then you return HTTP 418. There's an RC for it, and it's the official HTTP code for I'm a teapot. I can't brew coffee. Sorry. Bad request. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. Sorry, guys. I don't know how else to entertain you. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> no, it's not entertaining. It's Let not them go. Oh, okay, it's ready. Um, so I'm not going to introduce his full name because I actually can't say it. If you would like to say your full name. <laughs> Otherwise, this is there. Thank you. Hi, guys. Oops. Um, <coughs> hello. Uh, okay. Um, 
So I'm not actually a proper coder. I'm, I use Python functionally, <laughs> okay? I'm a cosmologist. <laughs> I, do, I do science and I just use Python to do, make calculations. And, um, okay? Um, so the reason, what I'm gonna show you is a lot of our calculations uh, are done not necessarily in Python. So they done either in C or Fortran. And those are uh, codes that are, have higher performance or sometimes they actually design to, to uh, solve differential equations that bring the universe from the beginning of the universe till today. Um, so, and sometimes they may take uh, a couple of minutes or several minutes to run depending on the accuracy and in Python they would take forever. Okay, so basically the thing is, as a cosmologist, what I do a lot of things, a lot of the things that I do is how to um, predict how well the square kilometer array, which is being under construction in South Africa, is gonna do cosmology. So, and not only that, and how well me using data from the square kilometer array with other optical telescopes uh, in elsewhere in the world can improve measurements of and improve our understanding of the universe. I'm a scientist. I don't care about the funny details of your code. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I like to make things more autonomous, okay? And a lot of the things that I have to do is, um, I, I, I could have predicted this, my car has been in the, in the garage for three weeks and he's phoning me now. <laughs> okay, so, so to do this, this is, so I'm not gonna go through the technicalities of the statistics of the calculations, but this means that I may have to run this code 120 times. Just, oh. So just by ha I have to run this code 120 times, just changing something, so I can then in the end do my my forecasts, my Fisher forecasts. Um, so this is the bunch of um, things that I may need now. Um, and what I want to speak about is this really nice uh, uh, library called Config Object. Um, and there's nothing. Okay, this is what I was reading. And there's nothing special about it. Um, so I have my template configuration file that I'm gonna show you here. Uh, does not wanna come? Okay. So basically it's a bunch of things with flags or with numbers, you know, it, and basically tells you a lot of the cosmological parameters of the universe. Gibberish for you, I understand. Um, but sometimes I have to do a lot of changes, so here I'm just copying and changing and making um, and importing that file. So that's a configuration file, and what this package allows me to do is that I import this configuration file as if it was a dictionary in Python. So then I can just keep editing it and changing something, um, which if I was doing it by hand, I would have to run the file, open again the initiation file, change it by hand, and I have to do this 120 times. It's very inefficient, I believe. Um, so, and the thing is, so this allows me to import this file as a, as a dictionary, and I can just edit. So you see that I have my keys as a dictionary. Um, this is the speed of sound of dark energy, amount of, Dark, cold dark energy, cold dark matter, doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, so I can just edit and change, and, um, and I can run it, um, and, oh, and I can make a plot, uh, and this is, long, this, is, this is how the, the fluctuations of matter in the sky look like when you take the the angular power spectrum. So just to let you know, let me see. I'm gonna take a lot of time. Okay, so I'm just gonna run this. And while it runs, I'm just gonna show the plot. So basically I can now automate everything. And I can do all these runs, and then I load the data and make my calculations instead of doing it 120 times by hand. I can do it in Python. 
Thank you, and thanks to all the people that did lightning talks. Um, that's it, guys. See you tomorrow at Hoppest 8. Don't forget to get your free t-shirts.